odds are if you own a Blackmagic pocket cinema camera or want to buy one, you want to shoot handheld footage, just like me, like many other DPs out in the world. Uh, some Something about handheld just gets you in the feels. If you don't know who I am, my name is Colin Osbury. I am a cinematographer and editor based on Atlanta, Georgia. In this video, I'm gonna show you some of the things that I've learned over the last month. I shot a music video with a buddy of mine and learned a lot from just going out there, putting the camera to the test, and uh, I thought I'd share that with you. Shooting with a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera and handheld can be tricky at times. And I know if you have a camera that doesn't have image stabilization, you already know that for sure. When I was looking at reviews for the Pocket Cinema camera, one of the biggest things for me that I, I just could not unsee was the jitter. I want to go more handheld, and yet, once I started to see it in almost every handheld vintage lens review, I'm like, oh, should I buy this? Should I spend thousands of dollars <laughs> you know, on this camera to, at the end of the day, walk home with a shaky image? The Pocket Cinema cameras do not have a stabilized sensor. And that's not a problem because most cinema cameras don't, but the problem and the difference is that cinema cameras have so much weight to them. So when you know a DP is holding it on their shoulder, holding it to their chest, the camera is so big that you don't see those micro jitters anymore. With the pocket cinema cameras, these things are so light. I remember pulling mine out of the box and I was surprised at how light it is. So if you're gonna build it out, you have to actually put some weight on it. You need to make sure you get a battery for it, some rails, you know, if you want to go that route with the map box and things like that. So if you take this camera off the tripod, just know that you will have to build it out for sure. My buddy Zach and I shot a music video for our buddies in the band called Wenlo. It's an indie band. Um, I'll definitely link it in the description once it's done. Very excited for it to come out. For the lenses, we decided to rent Contax Zeiss Primes. What I realized is that I did not feel comfortable shooting with longer lenses if it wasn't on a tripod. I was doing some tests in my room and realized that the weight of the Blackmagic camera at per se a 50 or an 85, the footage that I was getting, even with stabilization in post with in resolve, it just was not doing it for me. It was so jittery, it was so shaky because you're so far away from the subject that every single movement that you make is, is translated in the lens. For most of this music video, I stuck with a 21 millimeter lens, which is very, very weird for me. I love close-ups so much, and uh, primarily I'm in, I'm really in there a lot of the time, and uh, I was expecting to be that on the shoot. But what the 21 helped me to do was get in closer, to physically move closer to my subject, bringing more depth, creating more depth in the background, and honestly, I was very, very pleased with the image that we were getting. So let's pretend for a second that image stabilization in post does not exist. Once we throw our footage in there, most of the time, the result that we get, sometimes it's stable, yes, but once you really look for it, it's so easy to see straight lines just going like completely berserk. There's nothing that can ruin a shot more than some artificial like de-squeezing and morphing because yes, it is stable, so you did achieve that congratulations but like i feel like nothing really ruins a shot more than some crappy post-processing so let's try to avoid that if we can uh, something i can say is that when i'm shooting handheld if i'm trying to lock up if i'm trying to be steady i'm usually doing the wrong thing because my muscles are fighting against each other and all that energy is going straight into the sensor giving me a really really shaky shot so when I'm moving, what happens is I'm sending the camera in a direction, especially like with gravity helping you, you're sending the camera in a direction. And that's why you see, you know, there's a lot of DPs that kind of sway back and forth. They, they have their subject here and they're moving around it. Um, let's try not to do it like too, too much because there's some videos out there, especially on Vimeo. Vimeo is like a huge thing for this. There's that like, that DP sway back and forth where they're just like going back and forth. And I know, you know, in editing, we usually use one of those movements, but 
brother, you need to relax right now. We are moving around this person. Where are we going? What are we, what, like, where is this energy going? Um, just relax, breathe, brothers, breathe, and uh, vary up your shots a little bit. Just make sure to keep some of the movement in there to kind of give your camera some direction. Let it, let it flow somewhere and naturally let your muscles relax in a direction instead of tightening up and, and acting like a machine. I've seen a lot of people use top handles. The natural reason for that is that gravity is helping the camera be stable. So when I'm holding the camera up, gravity obviously is pulling the camera down, meaning that the only force being exhibited is my, is my pull on it upwards instead of me holding it from the side where my wrist is in play. Instead, it's just, it's just my arm is in play and that allows you to have a uh, more stable image. I have so much practicing to do to finally master that. I'm, <laughs> I, I, I try as hard as I can, but there's some people who can really, really do it. And that's because they've practiced and practiced over time. They've gone out and shot things, even when they weren't working. Um, they were always shooting something and I really admire that. So you've probably heard of easy rigs and that's the perfect explanation for what an easy rig does. Easy rig is just taking the weight off of your arms, putting it down into your shoulders and your back so that you can guide the camera in a direction. And if you're just starting out as a cinematographer, odds are you don't have one anyway. So we're not gonna cover that right now, but just know that that is an option that you have, especially for those heavier cameras. Some of the airy cameras, some of the red cameras get really heavy and shooting on those handheld you come home and you're just absolutely exhausted because of how much the camera weighs so easy rigs take care of that weight for you let's circle back all the way to lenses that have stabilization in them obviously that feature alone takes away and mitigates some of the light that goes into it but what i can say is that the canon f4 1635 is not my low light beast it's not the lens i'm going to take indoors and expect to get amazingly bright images you know in low light it is my outdoor handheld powerhouse because i know that you know for instance if i have a client i need to shoot for and i need to take talent outside i need to get some handheld stuff i know that i'm going to get a shot that it's stable it's steady i know that this lens will back me up i know that i will not have to fight some image stabilization in post i know that you know the image that i'm going to get it will be good So an instant way to level up if you do not have money for the gear, say you can only afford the body, you can only afford the lens, fantastic kit lens, whatever lens it is, I would highly recommend shooting in higher frame rates. So instead of 24 frames, you can shoot in 48 and then slow it down by 50%, or you can even shoot in 60, slow it down to 40%. You're gonna get a very, very stable image, basically no matter what you do. Some of the stuff that you can get is pretty insane, especially with this camera of all things. So I highly recommend that. And lastly, let's remember that our boy Roger Deakins and our boy Bradford Young are out there shooting movies and they're learning by doing. Man, I just, I used the motto for my film school. I never thought that would ever happen. Learn by doing, practice makes perfect. There's so much truth in that statement, even though it's cliche, please spend 50% researching and the other 50% going out there and shooting, making mistakes. I know that is something that I need to do for myself. I need to be better at putting myself in a position to make more mistakes. And um, yeah, that's a part of why this channel exists. So I hope this video is helpful for you. If you liked it, please like it and subscribe. It helps out the channel a ton and I will see you soon. There's a lot coming. <laughs>